What are the differences in the two most common types of non-melanocytic skin cancers, basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma? Hi, I'm Dr. G. Welcome back to Face It with Dr. G. I'm so excited to talk to you guys a little bit about squamous cell carcinomas and basal cell carcinomas and to give you a little bit of background of what they are and how they look under the microscope because you guys care, right? This stuff is so cool. Um, so squamous cell carcinomas and basal cell carcinomas are two types of cancers that are uh, facilitated and caused by sun exposure. There are some genetic conditions that predispose you to development of skin cancers as in immunocompromisation, if you're receiving um, treatment for cancer, a systemic type of cancer, or if you've had a transplant and you're on immunosuppression, those can predispose you to, de to developing squamous cell carcinomas. There are other conditions that can predispose you to basal cell carcinomas like Gorlin syndrome and several others. So let's talk about why they're different. Both squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinomas develop from the keratinocytes. And these keratinocytes in your skin, you have keratinocytes and you have melanocytes. So the melanocytes develop into potentially atypical melanocytic proliferations and melanomas, and the keratinocytes can develop into those non-melanocytic uh, skin cancers, squamous cell and basal cell. Squamous cell carcinomas tend to grow up and basal cell carcinomas tend to grow down. And they develop via different uh, signaling pathways, and we're not going to get into all of that detail, but squamous cell carcinomas can typically present as a rougher, dry patch that just doesn't go away. It may look like eczema to start. Don't think that all of your eczema is a squamous cell, okay, let's, let's be real. But squamous cells will itch, potentially. They can bleed, and if you peel them off and they keep coming back over and over and over again in a place that you've been burned or really sun exposed, that can potentially be a squamous cell carcinoma. They, they build up from the top of the skin surface. So when we see, well, there's a couple different types. So they can build up um, and those keratinocytes build on themselves and they be, can become verrucous where they look like a warty structure. They can become kind of like cauliflower under the microscope. They can be flat, like a boanoid type of squamous cell carcinoma where it's just flat. They also can grow down, so I guess I correct myself earlier. They can go grow down, but they grow down as a crater, so a crateriform type structure that almost can look like a follicle sometimes, and it goes really deep down and can infiltrate. It can encompass nerves, so if you have neuropathies associated with some skin cancers, that's not uncommon. Uh, there are higher risk areas and higher risk uh, findings that you find under the microscope with a, a cancer such as enveloping a nerve that, that tends to be a higher risk type of cancer. Squamous cell carcinomas under the microscope look pinker and this is because of a stain we use, the hematoxylin and eosin stain. In general, they can look pinker. Uh, let's talk about basal cells. So basal cell carcinomas are more lobular in appearance under the microscope as kind of these balls. So they're they're more enveloped, they're more circular. Again, these are generalizations. There are so many variants, and I'm just trying to give you some pearls. The basal cell carcinomas look more purple or blue due to that hematoxylin and eosin stain. They have these balls that inv invaginate from the epidermis, and they can start very superficially, so they can start right under the skin, and oftentimes patients will say it just looks like a little bump, little pink bump. And uh, these little pink bumps can stay, and you'll try and pick them off. You think they're a pimple or pop them, and they don't go away, and they bleed. They can have a little central depression in the middle, which is sometimes a sign that this isn't a pimple. And as they grow, you get these little buds that come off, and they can go and go and go and go and go. They both can. And you want to catch these early. Uh, what else about basal cell carcinomas? You can often see under the microscope in these big blue balls, lots of dead cells. So these are called apoptotic cells or apoptotic keratinocytes. You can see these in basal cells and in squamous cells, so those are features. But in general, I just wanted to give you an idea of what they look like. You've got the pink squamous cells and the blue basal cells. Dermatopathology is so interesting and cool and it's so important when talking about skin health and skin care 
and even injectables. And so I wanna give you an insight into, into that side of my world. I hope this gave you some education. This is by no means any sort of professional medical advice for you or your skin or any cancer screening. If you have any conditions or lesions that you want looked at, please go see a dermatologist. But I hope you liked this. Subscribe, share with your friends, and let me know what else you wanna hear about. Have a great one.